Wizard, what are you doing? There's no gas in that thing. Oh, I was just dreaming about cruising in this thing. We've got some really cool updates on the 38 Oldsmobile, and we're going to take a look at those today. Let's get started. So we've got a lot of really cool updates that we've done on this. In the previous video when we had Alex from Legit Streetcars in here, you guys got a quick little recap. But we're going to go in detail some of the things we've done. and We've finished up some things on here that look really good. It's starting to come along nicely. I can't wait to drive this thing and cruise it around the neighborhood. Let's start up front. So for those of you who haven't been following along, this is a recent purchase I made. It's a 1938 Oldsmobile L38 with the really cool flathead straight 8. No, it's not a V8, it's a straight 8, inline 8. We'll take a look at that here in a minute. One of the things that we've done here recently is I took out these headlight bulbs that were in here. The original owner had tried to convert this to 12 volt, and these are what you would find on an 80 Chevy truck or something like that. And they really just didn't look the part. They're, they're too flat, and... They were actually were smaller in diameter than this chrome ring. I did have one original lens, and I shopped really hard on eBay, and I found the second original lens. It was still in original packaging. It was really cool, for all the way from 1938. But behind here are small 5-inch motorcycle LED round headlights. It's got multiple LEDs in it. So if you look closely inside of there, you can see that it's hidden. There's a round 5-inch disc inside of there that has multiple LEDs on it. And I mounted them in there with some screws and some little brackets. So it looks stock, but behind this glass is LED bright white lights for good visibility while driving. I definitely wanted to have the dome-shaped look, the original glass, so it looks the part. But you can't put the original setup inside of there because it was 6 volt. That would burn up the bulbs. Maybe they had aftermarket bulbs that would fit in there, but everything that was inside behind the lens is missing. I've been finding it's really hard to find stuff on these old cars, especially Oldsmobile. You can find stuff all day for Chevys and, and Fords, but the Oldsmobile was not so many of them made. Let me turn these on and let you guys check it out. There we go. Nice bright white light. The little slots that they have in the lens that's supposed to scatter the light is still effective. It still does that. It has a nice broad white light out here now. It looks really, really cool. I'll have bright white LED lights. I won't have to change the bulbs for a long time. And it's 12 volt, just like the system is. It's 12 volt. So these also aren't going to get hot. They're not going to have a lot of heat with them. And when I turn the lights off, you're none the wiser. You think it's stock. It's not been messed with. You don't know. So that's what I really like about this setup. And for those of you who haven't seen Under the Hood, to check out this really cool straight eight, there's a few small things I've done under the hood. Not a whole lot yet. It runs perfect. So I'm not going to really do a whole lot under there, but let's take a look. I do have a brand new belt here, big wide belt, very wide V belt. It's got new plugs on it. The old ones were getting kind of crusty, but the cap and rotor, everything are in good shape. I did get an aftermarket black colored cone filter for the air filter, and it came with a steel deflector, kind of a shield, and I mounted it some of the original brackets. So it looks like Similar to the original setup was a black cylinder shape that was up here for the filter. But this is serviceable. I can blow this out. I can clean it. It's not the oil type. I don't like the oil type. This is just a dry air filter. So that will take care of that. I'm going to update also the fuel filter in case it were to leak. It's right next to the exhaust manifolds. We've got a brand new battery in here. The old one was toast. But as you can see down there, the previous owner has converted it to a 12 volt alternator. And it also has a Protronics electronic ignition underneath the distributor cap.
as you can see. No points, no points to mess with. That's quite a huge upgrade on these old cars. They start faster, run smoother, and you don't have to worry about degrading points. You can see through the floorboard, you can see the pedals. There's the brake pedal and the gas pedal and everything. That's the way those cars were in the teens, the 20s, the 30s, and even into the 40s and 50s. It's just the way they did it. One thing that the previous owner did was this switch is supposed to be sticking up so that when you hit the little tiny pedal like Alex did on our last video to start the engine, it's supposed to strike this button and engage the electrical portion of the starter. Right now, the pre previous owner has set up with a starter solenoid and you turn the key to do that. I don't like that. I'm gonna put it back the way it's supposed to be with a brand new part. That will go in place of that one. I'll go inside and push the little starter pedal. Yes, it has a starter pedal. And I'll let Mrs. Wizard watch it and see what it does. So as you can see up above the gas pedal, there's a tiny, small, round pedal. That is actually your starter. That is not a clutch. That's not anything else. It's actually your starter. You turn the key on and you mash that pedal all the way down. I'll show you guys what it does on the other side. So as you can see, what that pedal does is it physically engages, or I guess you could say manually engages the starter gear, the Bendix drive. And at the same time, it engages, it's supposed to engage this button, which is a switch for power. We're gonna be putting it back that way, the way it's supposed to be. It's just a really cool feature. I guess you could just put an upgraded starter or do something different, but I like it that way. I like to, to start the car like it was back in 1938. Let's close this side up and take a peek at the other side. As you can see, there's a trim piece here. It's kind of like a louver. I have one side, but I don't have the other side. I have no idea where I'm gonna find them. I just have to keep searching. supposed to have hood props but that's what we're going to do right now it's just so you guys can see here's a little Carter carburetor I think it's a WDO is what it's called it works perfectly I don't need to rebuild it or mess with it 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 works just fine at some point I will mount on the firewall a cruise control that connects in with this linkage and I'll put in a speed sensor on the drive shaft and everything it needs but that way I'll have a cruise control for cruising. This thing's not gonna cruise at 70 or 80 miles an hour. It's gonna be 55 or 60. As you can see, it has simple intake and exhaust all on the same side of the engine. Down there is a fuel pump and a vacuum pump combination unit. It does both. And this tube over here is not a coolant pipe or anything. That's what they used to do in the old days with PCV gases. Today we have crankcase vent valves or PCV valves, whatever you want to call them, that takes those vapors and put them into the engine and burns them, the intake. But back in the old days, they just vented it out to the atmosphere. So when these engines are running, there's a tiny bit of wisp of smoke coming out of the bottom. That's normal. They just let it go off in the atmosphere. This here is an oil pressure tube for an aftermarket oil pressure gauge. I'll probably be taking some of that out. We'll go to the interior here in a minute and you can see it has a set of three little aftermarket gauges. I will be getting rid of those. It doesn't look the part. This is where a windshield washer bottle would go and it would have hoses and things that go and spray up on for the windshield washer. Spray on the glass. Look at that big long engine guys. Eight cylinders in a row makes it go. And just like Hoovy's Woodsy Wagon we have here in the shop, it's a flathead. The valves are not in the head, they're in the block. Really, really old technology. They're not very efficient. A lot of hot rodders in the days, they didn't even mess with these flathead engines because there just wasn't much you could do with them. 
they when the V8s came out, they pretty much left these old inline flatheads in the dust. The gauges you're looking at right there are going to be going away. I don't like those things hanging down there. I'm going to try to see what I can do with the original gauges. That cluster right there you see, the gauges are all burned up. The, the speedometer is damaged. You can't find that stuff anymore. I mean, I've talked to a few guys on ClassicOldsmobile.com. They're like, yeah, nope, no luck. Nobody has that stuff anymore. I may keep that and store it for somebody in the future if they want it, if they want to try and fix it themselves. And I may just bolt in, without modifying the dash, bolt in an aftermarket gauge set. So I'll have all my gauges and everything I need without modifying the dash or doing anything damaging to the rest of the car. You can see a big hole right here. That's where like a cigarette lighter and ashtray and things used to go. And that's this little guy. It goes in, goes in right there. I need to paint it to match the color, but what I've done is I've installed a marine radio out of a boat, a yacht radio. A JBL circular gauge. It's kind of like where a gauge would go. It fits, you can fit a radio. It has all the buttons, it has Bluetooth, volume, everything there. It's 45 watts times four. It has all the wiring and connectors, everything here. But when I'm not using the radio, I can close this little louver down. And you never even know that it has a radio there. That's kind of what I was going for. At first glance, everything looks stock. So that'll be really cool. I'm just going to put two speakers in here. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. I'm only going to install two speakers in this car. I don't want to cut anything back there or mess with anything. So I got these marine speakers. They're 120 watts. I won't even be putting that kind of power out. But they're all plastic and lightweight and easy to work with. I will paint this to match this fabric here. I'm going to put them in these kick panels so that I'm not cutting into the body or the metal of the, of the vehicle. And they'll be up in here, fl flush mounted of course. And they will be, like I said, color matching to this fabric. So it won't be too out of the ordinary, but yet it'll have Bluetooth radio I can listen to. I've also put this shifter knob on here. The original knob was missing, broken into smithereens. And a nice round and it's the correct shift pattern. It was actually kind of hard to find that shift pattern. Reverse, one, two, and three. And for the glove box, as you can see, there's nothing in there. There should have been like a cardboard box or something in there for, for storing things. What I'm probably going to do is build my own box, a wooden box. I'm gonna take these knobs and hide them inside of here. And at some point, I'll also, there's plenty of room here to install an under dash air conditioner. And I will also put those controls in here. So you open the glove box, you can do all the controls and things you need. And there'll be enough room to store some registration paperwork or whatnot. But I'm not going to do having stuff hanging off the bottom. And it doesn't look very good to me. I also have a rear view mirror put in. It's an aftermarket chrome one. It bolts in to the same place the original screws were. So now I have a rear view mirror, the original one's gone. And right in front of you, Mrs. Wizard, I have a horn button. That was missing in this car. Now it has Oldsmobile center cap for the steering wheel. It's a old used one. You can see it's seen a lot of years. That's not a reproduction one, it's actual authentic 1930s. Do you think it could have come from a Christmas story, you know, with him bashing the horn a few times, being angry at his car? It could have. Uh, obviously, it didn't damage it, so luckily we can use it. Got a little bit of a dent there, though, but you know, maybe it did come from the movie. Yeah. Well, it's just like the rest of the car. It's got character and a story to tell. In a previous Oldsmobile video we did, one of you commenters mentioned that these gaskets around the window were installed backwards. And I think you're correct because I looked at some pictures of these cars back in the old days, and the windows do not stick out a full finger's thickness. They're flush, pretty much. So what I'll have to do is take these out, which is just ru brand new rubber, luckily. Take the glass out, flip the rubber gaskets around, and reinstall it. And that won't be that big of a deal, but glad you guys caught that. I don't want, want it to look right, so we need to fix that. In the trunk, it was completely rusted out. You can't find 
trunk pans for 1938 Oldsmobile. You can find Chevys all day long and Fords and all the different ones, but not Oldsmobiles. So we welded in plate steel in place of it. Let's take a look. Right now I have a piece of plywood up there temporarily just to keep spray paint and welding sparks out of the back of the seats. But as you can see, we have the same angle as original. It's heavy plate steel. It's not little thin paper thin stuff. It's pretty thick. It should never rust out again. We've got some body filler to fill up to fill where the fuel filler neck is and everything. So that's all taken care of. And there will be a piece of wood that goes across this frame piece here, which originally would have. My spare tire will no longer fit under here, but that's fine. I'll just set it up on top. And I can store tools or whatever underneath on the bottom. But this was a solution that I came up with and decided to go ahead and do this, even though it doesn't match the original form of the car. This metal will probably last 50 years. It's not going to rust out again. And it looks clean. It looks flat and it was welded very well. I had Junior Mint welded. He did a good job. Let's go ahead and take this wood out of here. As you can see it's just burlap and fabric from the seat and wood, wood framing. I definitely didn't need to get welding sparks down in there and start a fire so that's why we had the, the cover over it. But this makes this usable and drivable. This, like I said, is not going to be a museum piece. This is going to be a vehicle that I'm going to drive probably once or twice a week once it's if the weather's nice. I plan on enjoying this car and putting some miles on it. Let's go ahead and raise it up and show you guys what I did with the fuel tank. When this vehicle first came in the shop, it had some rigged fuel tank that they was kind of just thrown together on there. And it was being held in by baling wire. I don't even know what the gas tank came from. It was a little Volkswagen Beetle gas tank or something. I don't know what it came from. It was totally not something I wanted to use on a daily basis. It was kind of cobbled together and I really didn't like it. You cannot get a 1938 Oldsmobile gas tank. You can get Chevys. They don't line up. They don't... It's not the same, but what I did find that fits very well, almost perfectly, was 1962 Chevy Nova gas tank. It's the same width, the same length, the depth is about the same. We did have to modify here to fit the lines and things, and we'll weld a new plate over that. There's no gas in it at the moment, so we don't have to worry about welding and sparks and things. But these straps are off of 62 Nova. The bolts, everything, it lined up very, very well. I think it looks great. Over in here, we'll see the filler neck. It had some cobbled together pipes or something and it really wasn't that good looking. So we're gonna weld in just the filler neck top to the body and just got some 90 degree, two and a quarter inch hose and it just perfectly goes right to the gas tank. Most cars use flexible hose like that on their gas tanks. I figured, why can't we do that on here? And we did. So I have my fuel tank situation solved. I have the rusted out floor pan solved. Headlights are solved. Radio situation is figured out. It's going to be solved. We're really coming along pretty nice on this. We're doing very well. So before we lower it down, I have one more thing to show you. So here we have an original drum off of a 1938 Oldsmobile. It's kind of rusty. I searched and searched and searched, and again, another item you can't buy brand new for an old Oldsmobile. This one's in good shape, it just needs to be resurfaced. But before we do anything with it, I wanted you guys to look in here. Ball bearings. I've never seen that before. I've never worked on cars this old before. There's actually ball bearings in there. Most cars have roller bearings. That's old school ball bearings, it's pretty neat. So we'll go look under the car and I'll show you why I bought this. I'm gonna spin this wheel and you can see that the previous owner tried to pry the drum off and they bent the hell out of it. 
the gap gets small and then it goes big. I kept having a situation where my brakes would feel really good and then they would go halfway down and then they'd feel good again. And I found out it was this drum. Someone tried to pry it off and they bent, actually bent the drum. So we got a nice round one that's gonna go on and replace that and it'll take care of that and give me nice brakes. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So I still have a ways to go on this car, but it's coming along really nice. I'm gonna take these nasty looking turn signals off and do something that's more period correct, maybe small round ones that go on the side of the headlamp housings here or something like that. I still need to find the louver that goes on the hood. I think it's the driver's side that I need. But slowly, bit by bit, this is getting taken care of. I can't wait to drive it. The last thing that we're gonna do is have it sanded and painted. But that's once we got all the mechanicals done, the radio, air conditioning, all the things upgraded that I want to do. It's been very tough to find parts for this thing and I expected that that would happen. It's not that big of a deal. But for the most part, I'm really happy with the condition of it, even with some of the work we've had to do in the trunk and whatnot. But so many of these, you find them for sale for five and six thousand dollars, so they're just completely roached out. The floor pans are gone, the engine doesn't run, or the engine's even missing. Good luck finding a straight eight running engine. This one runs perfect. You guys can check out the previous video and hear it run. It runs like a sewing machine. It's very, very good. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on this, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. All my tools that I use in the shop are listed for sale there and we get a small cut. We appreciate that. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do that now. We've got more Malibu updates and we have some yacht updates coming soon. Thanks for watching.